Welcome to this free lesson that's part of a larger course you can find on digitalcreatorschool.com. Hi, and welcome to this updated lesson with Maya 2022 coming out just today. I wanted to go ahead and make an updated video that shows you an even better way to make cords, ropes, wires, all that kind of good stuff. They actually came out with a new method, which I want to share with you. So we're gonna use the Ghostbuster example and replace the cord that we've previously made in the course. So I'm just gonna select that geometry. And before I do uh, delete it, I just wanted to you know mention Notice the issue we had here previously using the extrusion method along a curve. You always had the problem of that extra little bit that you extruded from, and then also the possibility of flipping normals of the faces if you adjusted the curve later. And that seems to be pretty much resolved with this new method. So let's select that geometry and delete it if you're following along with the course project files. And I'm gonna select the curve and Kind of weirdly enough, this new feature is not in the mesh controls, it's actually under create. So if you go to create, you have sweep mesh. I'd be curious to see if they leave this function, this operation here, because it seems a bit out of place to have on the create menu. I feel like it's a mesh operation, but anyway, go to create sweep mesh and boom, you have your cord. No fussy extruding along a, along a curve and creating divisions. It's pretty smartly creates the geometry for us and we have all these settings now in the attribute editor for this sweep mesh creator. So let's run through a few of these. Obviously first we can see that it's too big. So we can go to the scale profile and the default profile that we have is a poly profile. And so we can just scale that profile down until we have the correct size for the cord that we want. So it's not intersecting the ground anymore roughly in here somewhere. And then we can see if we turn on the wireframe on shaded that it's a bit rough, not just in the profile, but also in the along the length. So let's address both of those um, issues with the resolution of the curve or the mesh that the curve is making. So we can get to the sweet mesh creator tab here and then we can increase the sides of the circle so that that is solving the profile issue, the resolution there. And then if we scroll down to the interpolation tab here, we have mode precision on and we can just increase that until we have enough subdivisions along our curve that it's no longer kind of low poly looking. So that's the main kind of points here. And to really get back to the one we had before, we can just click add caps and we're kind of done. So that's really a much more efficient way, I think, to create a curve or a uh, rope than the extrusion method that we've learned previously. Let's take this a little bit further though, because there are some really cool options here to go even further than just a simple cord here. Let's say we wanted a braided rope or we wanted to create the interior wires of a, of a cord. We could click the distribute button here and now we have um, the option to add the number of instances. Let's say, let's imagine this is the interior of a cord and we wanted you know, wires splaying out, this would be the way to do that. Or if we wanted a braided rope, we could do that very easily as well. All we have to do to get the braided effect is go down to the transformation options here and then just increase the twist of this. And of course we can take that past the soft limiter of two and type in a value that we want. Uh, of course with 90, we can see we've kind of broken the model and it's intersecting itself. So that just gave us a, a better range to now adjust this down to something that makes sense for the subdivisions we have and the length of the cord that we have here. So this is a really easy way to create a braided rope. I can also turn off the uh, wireframe so you can kind of see that. Now the other thing we're left with is the fact that now these are kind of separated from one another. We can click on the sweet mesh creator to get back to the menu. We can basically adjust two values. One is the scale of the instances. So now that they start to kind of intersect each other and connect with each other. The other issue though, if you wanna kind of compensate for the fact that you've scaled everything up, you'd have to go into the scale profile and then bring that down. So we can do that to maintain the overall profile of these instances at the same uh, kind of scale. So you'd have to kind of tweak these together to make sure that you're overall not scaling everything too much. And so those are the two things you'd want to adjust. Obviously there's these other kind of uh, distribution types that you can experiment with to get different types of effects. The other noteworthy adjustments here you can make is a really cool uh, taper 
here that um, I think would be useful for hair, you know, if you're doing some kind of uh, who knows what. Um, but it gives you a lot more control than previously where you'd have to, I don't, I don't even really know how you do this previously, but this is a, a really cool effect. Something, you know, that's kind of small to improve upon, but they really went far with it. Now, the other sweet profiles are pretty self-explanatory. They just give you different modes to adjust the profile that it's using. You know, something even like a rectangle could be turned into a sphere just by adjusting the corner radius, for example. But so, uh, you know, and this is a road. If we turn off distribute, we could see and turn off the twist. We could see, you know, this could be something just to create a path or a road very easily uh, using the line method here. And then, of course, we have an arc, which is just like a semicircle, very quickly, easy, easily to do. And then we have a wave, which would be, you know, maybe the gutter of a sidewalk or something. It's, but it's pretty nice that they give you these most common scenarios here just at the top menu. And it's very kind of user friendly showing these icons like this. Now, the final one I wanted to touch on was custom, and it was a bit finicky when I'm when I'm playing with it. Let me show you, uh, you know, obviously it's gonna take a custom curve that we define. If I just draw one out, let's just say something like this, and I go back to the mesh and the sweet mesh creator, I can choose this custom and it will pop up this new window that asks me to select what curve I wanna use as the profile. Once that's selected, let me turn back on the wireframe on Shaded to show you kind of what I mean. The profile that I drew was the cubic interpolation, so it's it's smooth. But if you look at the profile that we're getting from this, it's very rough. Um, let me just close this down so you can see the profile of this thing. You can see it's pretty low poly. And the only way I found that that would be improved is it appears that this option is actually controlled by the relative scale of the profile, which is kind of surprising. It wouldn't just take an absolute kind of interpolation of this. So what I mean is because this is relatively small, I guess, for however it's determining that scale factor is, if we scale this up at the control vertex level, so if I just take these and I scale these up, you can see it starts to add more subdivisions. So now it gets to be a lot smoother. So it's based on the relative scale. You know, maybe it's the link relative to the length of the curve. It's being uh, sweeped down. I'm not really sure, but just know if you're not getting the right result for the custom, it's probably because the scale of the control vertices. Again, I'm not scaling this at the object level. I'm scaling this at the control vertex level. You can see if I scale this up at the object level, it's not changing at all. You gotta do it and go into actually edit the control vertices and scale those up. So that's kind of one finicky thing I noticed experimenting with this. And then again, obviously the way to counteract this is it scaled up the entire thing. And if we just wanna scale that down, we can just scale it down through these attributes here and get back down to the size that we wanted. But that's something uh, noteworthy to look out for if you wanted to use a custom effect. I think this would be great. Like if you're doing you know, corner trim in a room and you're modeling a room or something, it'd be a great way to get a uh, custom trim sweeped along a curve instead of using the old extrude method. So I'm really excited to use this in my next project. So hopefully this is helpful for you and you get some cool ideas to use it in your own projects. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks for watching this free lesson. If you wanna see the entire course, you can become a member at digitalcreatorschool.com to get the course in its entirety, as well as all the courses available on the website, in addition to all future courses that will be published as a monthly or annual member. You can cancel any time. I will see you there. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the bell notification icons, as well as leave me a comment if you wanna see more videos like this, or if you have a suggestion for a video you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for watching.